What's up? I'm B, and whether you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening to the podcast, I hope you are having an amazing day. Today, we will be reacting to a Girl Defined video called The Anxiety Inducing Impact of Social Media, and this was posted on April 17th of this year. Now, there are a few reasons that I wanted to react to this particular video this week, and kind of the biggest one is because I wanted to do it as a follow-up to the video that I did last week reacting to um, Bethany and Dave's conversation, the collaboration that they did with Sam and Tanner from Zelf on the Shelf. In that video, I had mentioned, and I still, I still feel this way, uh, that Bethany might benefit from taking a little bit of time away from social media with Dave kind of opening up to Bethany and to us as an audience and saying that he does not find comfort in Christianity and he's not sure that he wants to be a Christian anymore. That's a, a pretty big change. That is something that um, I don't imagine Bethany viewed happening. Like I, I maybe because she knows Dave and like they're married and they have a, an intimate close relationship. Maybe she saw some signs of like, okay, Dave might not be on the same page as me with certain things. And Dave was like wanting to switch to a Lutheran church instead of the old church that we went to. And so she's obviously seeing these changes in some of his perspectives, but I don't know that she expected him to, um, just plainly say like, I, I don't know if I want to be a Christian anymore, which is essentially what we have heard from him. And that's what he is exploring right now. He is going through deconstruction and Bethany is supporting him and kind of just helping him. Well, I don't know if she's helping him work through that, but she's like giving him the space from what we've seen to feel free to be able to explore deconstruction and um, what what he wants his life to look like and what he wants his beliefs to be or not be. And so anyway, that's a huge change. And I was like, I really think that Bethany could use some time off the internet. Um, like I, this is such a really um, emotionally impactful thing to be processing. This is going to be a lot of emotions and like ups and downs. And clearly like it's a lot for her to process. And I like I wouldn't expect it to be any other way. So that's like for me, um, just as a person, I was like, I think it might be a good idea if she took some time away to like work through this. And it was interesting because I saw quite a few people with the opposite opinion saying that they were glad that she was talking about these things and these emotions and this process as it was happening. And they found a lot of value in that. So it was cool to see the other perspectives um, on that same topic, but like that was what I thought, and that is, like that's still my opinion. But um, so that was like kind of the main reason that I wanted to do this. And then Bethany announced that she was going to be taking some time away from social media. They re oh, I'm like all over the place. So she and Kristen recently did a video, kind of talking about like their plans for the summer and what they were going to be intentionally focusing on. And they also talked about Kristen announcing that she's pregnant. And so I just want to say a huge congratulations to Kristen. I know that fertility has been something that she has been um, really just like that's a journey that she's been on and she and her husband have tried for many years to um, have a child biologically and of course they do have their two boys and so now their family is expanding even more and I just hope that um, her pregnancy has been smooth and peaceful and healthy and that her delivery is amazing and, and everyone's safe and everyone's happy and everyone's taken care of. So wishing all the best and all the good things for her and her growing family. And that's awesome. Um, but so they had talked about that and what their plans were for the summer and being intentional about things. And so Bethany did announce that she is taking a break from social media. Additionally, it's interesting to compare how Bethany and Kristen each treat social media. I feel like in general, Kristen is just a lot more um, quiet on social media. Like we don't see her posting a ton. She's a lot more behind the scenes. Of course, she's involved in Girl Defined and she like posts on there and she does um, a lot of the interviews that they end up doing on the Girl Defined channel and on their podcast. And so obviously she's involved. She's around. We know she's there. But it doesn't seem like her main focus is posting on social media in general. Bethany, on the other hand, she used to be everywhere. 
once they did the episode of 24 Hours With on Paul and Morgan's channel, I feel like her posting got a lot less frequent. I mean, she was like posting uh, kind of like as she had been for a little bit after that came out. And I think it was because she and Dave were getting a lot of attention. And so she was just kind of posting being like, we're good. Like, we're okay. We're, we're on a date. We're taking a little trip with the family. Like, everything's great. Um, so she was posting pretty frequently right after that came out. But ever since then, I feel like it's just been less and less. And then that's on her, like, personal Instagram. On her other Instagrams, on the Intimate Wife, She Works Smart. I think there's one called, like, Single Girl Devotions. She's got a bunch of other pages that she used to post, like, mad on. Like I remember um, when She Works Smart first started, it was like every time I opened up Instagram, Bethany had posted something or she had reposted a reel or she had posted a reel explaining why it was okay that she had reposted a reel. And so she used to be all over like in your face with her social media presence. And now that's changed a little bit. So Anyway, there's tons of reasons why I thought that this would be uh, an interesting and a timely video to react to, but those are just a few of them. And let's go ahead and do win for the week and then we will get into the reaction. If you are new around here, a win for the week is just where you share something positive that happened to you over the past week that you would consider a win, big or small, whatever it may be, if it made you happy, if it made you feel grateful, if it brought you joy, if you consider it a win, I want to hear about it and celebrate with you. And if you are watching this on YouTube, you can leave your win in the comment section down below. And if you are listening to the podcast on Spotify, you can leave it in the Q&A for this particular episode. My win for the week is getting to eat Fazoli's over the weekend. And if you're a Midwesterner who has moved to a state where they don't have Fazoli's, I feel like you're going to you're gonna get my heart on this one and you're going to be like, B, that's so amazing. I'm so happy for you. A lot of people don't get it. A lot of people don't get the Fazoli's hype. And I understand because I feel like 90% of the hype is nostalgia. But um, when we moved from Illinois to Arizona, they had Fazoli's out here. And then a while back, they closed them all down. We had nothing. We had no fast food Italian. And uh, recently they opened two locations in the state. And so over the weekend, my husband and I went, we got f- some Fazoli's and it was amazing. And I had so many breadsticks and I just loved every second of it. So that is my win for the week. And I cannot wait to hear yours and celebrate with you. Now let's get into this reaction. I wonder if we ask the sisterhood, who enjoys being on social media more, Kristen or myself? I wonder what y'all would I say. I wonder what so, they would say. Hmm. Go vote like on Instagram <laughs> and let us know. You want to you actually do a vote? I want to actually do a vote. Okay, let's. Guys, who do you think it is? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> let's reveal. Okay, so like what? Pause the video. Go vote because we're about to reveal. Got it. <laughs> Okay. Vote in your head. Who thinks it's Bethany? Raise your hand right now, wherever you are. Ooh, ooh, me. Who thinks it's Kristen? (laughs) Raise your hand wherever you are. Okay, people have actually asked about that though. Like sometimes you'll be, you will not be on Instagram very much, or you will not be on social media very. Never happens. I'm like. I'm like, yes, it does. I am and on all the time. Even like on Girl Define, and people will be like, where's Kristen? We haven't like <laughs> seen her. And here's the little behind the scenes. Naturally, mm. I just enjoy it. Like as a hobby, yeah. as connecting with people, as just fun. It's something that I would choose to do just as like a fun thing for me. And I do it because it's necessary <laughs> for the ministry. <laughs> you know? yep. Like, no. Yeah. I, I don't really love it. Yeah. I mean, we've done- That sounds about right. Talked about this. Like, it's clear based on my own Instagram account that I don't love it because clearly I never post and I'm never on there. And even when I try, like, I'll be like, you know what? Yeah. I kind of want to share more. Like, I want to be more present, you know, on there. And then I'll, I'll do it for like a week. And then it's just not my natural yeah. enjoyment, like my natural inclination. I'm not drawn to it. I'm more repelled by it in the sense that like, I don't enjoy it really on many levels. And so it doesn't last. It'll go for like a week and then, but in Girl Defined, I mean, Bethany handles like the behind the scenes of our social media and like managing it and stuff. And you're always getting on my tail. Like, okay, could you hop on and do some stories? Like on her tail. I'm constantly. 
I mean, that's so real. I don't know if that's a personality thing or what, but I'm very much like I, I understand Kristen's struggle because I always think that too. I'm like, you know what? I should be posting in my stories more. And then I'm like, okay, what do I do every day? I, oh, I, I'm having coffee. I'm working. I'm eating lunch. I'm, I'm looking at your comments. I'm eating dinner. <laughs> like there, it, it's very repetitive. And for some people, they live very interesting lives. And so they have tons of stuff to post. Other people find a way to make their day-to-day -day lives very interesting. But for me, I'm like, how many times can I post the same cup of coffee that I drink every day uh, before people are like, we get it. Like we're done. We're unfollowing. <laughs> we are over it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm with you, Kristen. Didly but you know what? That's why we're a team. Okay. But here's the real question. Here's the real question. You, it's hard for you to get on and post and hmm. share, but how much do you consume? Oh, okay. Not that much. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I'm like looking for like a, I know answer. you thought it was going to be like, Oh, I'm just scrolling like things from, she like, wanted to get like stuff. But from what account? Kristen. No. I saw one recently. Okay, someone hacked me. I literally hadn't... I've been logged out for like months. I'm not even logged in right now. Wait, seriously? N yeah. But I just <laughs> saw a reel where you're, you have liked it. I literally have not... Like, it's not even thought, on my phone. I thought that's what you told me. So, y'all, today I saw a reel... Ugh. Unless it was someone resharing a really old reel. Okay, it could have been an it old could one. Have been but I was like, I thought that. I was like, I thought she said she like. No, all I'm still in. logged out and like I I can't remember my password That's and so weird. I haven't been on in months. So what do you on my uh, own? So on Girl Defined, you consume from. So Girl on Girl Defined. Defined or? If I'm going to do anything on Instagram right now, it's exclusively on Girl Defined. Oh, that's interesting. So if I'm looking at anything, like, oh, I want to look up this person or, you know, like people will share, yeah. like they'll text you and share Instagram videos, like, oh, check out this funny thing or, oh, this product. And they'll like friends will even send links. Yeah. I click on it, but it goes through the Girl Defined page, like to view that yeah, whatever yeah, that yeah. little reel is or whatever. And I don't really interact yeah. with them. Like I don't like them or comment because it's through Girl Defined, but... That's interesting. Yeah. So yeah. I like, I don't consume, like I rarely will like watch YouTube videos like yeah. here and there if it's a specific topic that I'm like, oh, I want to learn more about that. Normally yeah. it's like educational. Yeah. <laughs> if it's something about like motherhood or I don't know, like I'll look it up on YouTube. Yeah. But other than that, like I'm not, not on Twitter, I guess the new X. I'm not, I deleted oh. my Facebook account years ago because yeah. I was like, like when I got married, I'm like, I don't even like care about Facebook, so I just deleted it. You're not that into the social. No, yeah. but it's interesting as yeah. I've talked to people there is, I feel like there's kind of a split of like yeah. people, even in our own family, like I've talked to our other sisters and yeah. there are some that are like, oh, I enjoy it. I enjoy posting. It gives me energy. I love engaging. And then others who are like, it does not give me energy. But they all consume. I don't guarantee. enjoy it, but they, they can, they, they probably consume more. They tag, like we have like a, you know, a sister's group or a girl's group, whatever in our family text group. Okay. And we are constantly getting reels from Yeah, them. true. Like, and I, I'll fun. share one here and there too. Yeah. But like, I don't get on Instagram every single day. Yeah. Okay. Well, now I'm telling, confessing and I you're know. like, get on girls. She's more. supposed to be posting in stories more, sharing her life. <laughs> I do. I mean. Okay. Here's what brought this up though. I off camera. Yeah, why are we talking about this? I brought up this idea of talking yeah, about social chat. media and here's why. I was having a conversation with a good friend the other day and she was saying that they were considering, she was really like pushing her husband to consider the idea of moving somewhere. And when it got down to it, she realized the reason she mm. wanted to move to this specific location was literally because she wanted to be more of this Instagram looking lifestyle that she had been consuming oh, on Instagram without even realizing it. It was her husband who kind of like realized that like you, this isn't like what you actually are like wanting, but you're have been so consuming mm. so much that you've basically built up this idea that this is the good life. And to have this life, you need to live in this place and live this lifestyle and all mm. of that. And it was literally from Instagram, from being on oh. Instagram. And I realized I can see that. I can see somebody like, because you know when people post um, like lifestyle content and you see their house and everything's updated and it's gorgeous and you're like, wow, like, oh, like it must it must be nice to have a house like that or it must be nice to live in like a brand new build. That looks amazing. But then you have the other side of like TikTok and Reels where they're always like, can we normalize like 
ugly houses? Can we normalize outdated old houses? And you also have a lot of uh, people relating to that and being like, yes, please, I want to see more of this on my feed. So it's interesting seeing kind of like the two sides of the coin of the non-influencer influencers who are like, let's normalize having regular sized homes and not everything super updated and we don't have the most open floor plan with the brightest lighting in here. And then also the influencer -y influencers who do have the updated homes and the white kitchens and the marble countertops and everything is like looks like it's picture perfect made for social media and seeing how different people interact with each of those kinds of content it's like wow like for a lot of us yeah we are pursuing things we are living for things we are desiring things your flashlight's on oh. right? <laughs> <laughs> my phone flashlight a little um, light. without even realizing it. And if we don't have someone who's like in tune enough with us, like a husband or a really good friend or wow. sister to call us out, mm -hmm. we might be in like spending our money, spending our time, like mm -hmm. spending our energy, our focus, our purpose in life. Like we might yeah. literally be living for things that have been influenced by social media without even realizing it. And so I wanted to record this episode mm. as just kind of like a, hey, like let's take a step back and actually think about like what are we consuming and how is that like influencing our perspective on what we're living for and why yeah. we're living as Christian women. Okay. Okay. Honest question. Have you ever like been influenced by something you've seen on Instagram, social media, like and then went out and bought the thing because you saw it on Instagram? Uh, $50 cup right here, folks. Oh, you're Stanley. Stanley. Wait, really? Okay. You saw like an ad or like a oh, mom yeah. posting about it? For sure. I got a Stanley because I saw like other moms posting about it, but I, I will say I got this as like my own little push present for Audrey, like giving birth. This was worth every $50 I spent. <laughs> I have used this now for over a year. I use this postpartum. Okay, like, wait, wait, is this a commercial? <laughs> yeah, I know. Now this is a commercial. No, but seriously, some of these things you, yeah. and other things you're like, mm -hmm, what? Yeah. No. I, so I try to get out of the mode of like, um, what do you call it? Uh, when you buy something really, oh, like an impulse purchase, impulse purchase. Yeah. I really, really try not to do that because I recognize like so many of these things that seem fun in the moment and give you like a little shot of adrenaline, like, yeah. Ooh, or dopamine or whatever. Like I like this. It's like, you don't use it. You know, you don't really care mm. about it or whatever. But Except your Stanley. Except my Stanley that I didn't, it wasn't like an impulse purchase, but I kept seeing people and I was influenced by it, like genuinely. So mm. I don't know. Have you? I have, which is so random because I'm yeah, not no. even on there that like, much. Like what was it? Like, okay, the thing that came to mind for me when I thought like, okay, how, like as you were talking, I'm thinking, how have I been impacted to want to make a decision? Yeah. Not necessarily, like I've never gone to the extreme of I want to move across the country yeah. to change my aesthetic so my lifestyle can look more like what I want it to be for Instagram. Like I'm not, I don't know if yeah. I'm on it enough to get that influenced. Maybe I don't, I got to think about this more deeply yeah. now though. Um, but for me, it was just like a really cute purse. It was like uh. this like purse and I saw, it was just literally, I think it was from the store that was selling it, but it was like That's a promotion, funny. like an ad or whatever. And it was just so cute. And I like never just no. see and click and buy and Zach and I, like, we are really good about our budget and like yeah. we review it regularly, but we have what we call fun money, a category where it's like, we can each yeah. just have fun and buy whatever we want without having to like give an account on the budget. And so it was just like one of, and it, you know what? It wasn't super cheap either, but it was just like, I just clicked and bought that so ba random. baby and it, it was like, wow. Okay. And then wow. I don't really wear it that much. So I don't even know which one it is. It's like that leather, like looking sling that goes across. Oh, I mean, I don't care. Either. You're like, oh. Okay, y'all, what's the last thing that you were influenced to buy from social media? Because for me, for some reason, I keep getting – well, for some reason, because I'm watching them, so they keep popping up on my TikTok – but it's all these girls who are like, I'm convinced the uglier that you go to bed, the prettier you wake up. And they have like the Wonder Skin lip stain. And so I bought that. And I think it's pretty cool. I like it. Um, I don't use it all the time, but I've used it quite a bit and it's not bad. Like pretty good purchase. Would buy again. So if you've been influenced to buy something recently, what was it? Now I'm very curious and nosy and I want to know. Oh, I don't even remember no. it. I so I put all I'll my cards. I put my cards in the back of my phone, but my phone case broke, so my cards are falling out. So now my uh, my driver's license risky. and my debit card are like literally just in my pocket. Oh my goodness! So, I cannot do a purse. You don't even carry one. Oh no! Between the kids and the diaper bags and everything, it's like the diaper bag's good enough for a purse. But then when I don't have the kids in the diaper bag, it's like 
I don't got anywhere to put my stuff. <laughs> um, okay, so think, we've both been yeah. guilty of that. And I, I would love to hear from you guys too. Like, yeah. speaking of social media, hop on over to Instagram at Girl Define. Let us know. Have you yeah. ever, like, comment on this. Like, have you ever, like, been yeah. influenced even in a small way where you see something and then you act immediately and you get it and, like, did you regret yeah. it? Were you happy about it? I think the bigger question, though, is – when it comes to what we are living mm-hmm. for, why we're living, the choices we make as Christian women, the convictions we hold, the stances we take, um, is it based off of like people influencing us literally online, on social media, or is it based mm-hmm. off of like the truth of God's word? And I actually had this conversation with Elisa Childers. I did an interview with her. Oh, I'll yeah. link it below. But I was sharing with her a story. You know, I was asking her about a story. It was of a, so it was a reel and it was basically of a man and he was talking about how he, um, I guess used to be like Mormon and then he, I guess came out as gay and now he's married to another man. And it was basically this whole thing, like just live and let live and let's love and support one another and all of this stuff. And I was asking her like, okay, when you see this really well put together video, it can, you're like, as a Christian, like, am I just like this terribly hateful person? Am I just like this huge homophobic person? if I believe like marriage is between a man and a woman. And so her and I really dug into that because when you see things like that on social media that are really compelling, it can be confusing. Like, wait, what should I believe as a Christian? Like, does it matter? Like if a man marries Mm -hmm. a man and that's a whole conversation that we discussed with Elisa Childers. So if you're wanting like, yeah, I actually, I see things like that and I I want help on how to, to like understand that. I Oh, that's interesting. I wonder what she said in that conversation with Elisa. I'm going to have to go back and listen to it because Um, This was a big part of her conversation with Sam and Tanner. And I feel like Bethany gave an answer in her conversation with Sam and Tanner that was tailored to who they were. I feel like Bethany is good at understanding who she's speaking to and kind of shifting certain things to make sure that even if she's not like fully agreeing with you or like fully giving you what you want to hear, she's giving you um, an opinion that you might not align with she knows how to give it in a way that isn't going to cause like a blow up right she knows how to tailor her language to make it a little bit more palatable to her audience in in real time because they're they're gonna hear bethany in that conversation that she had with sam and tanner be like oh like I, I, I love everyone. And if someday my son came home and he said he was gay, I'd be like, you and your person come, like, come here. I love you. I just, I just want you in my home. I want you to feel comfortable in my home. But I still think that there's a specific design that God created for marriage. And I think that that's what results in people living their best lives. Like she knows how to tailor it in a way that like softens the blow of what she's saying, depending on who she's talking to. And so I wonder if, in that conversation with Elisa, she had that same perspective of, well, it doesn't matter to me. I just love you. Or if she presented something a little bit different, I don't know because I haven't seen it. So um, like, I don't know either way, but yeah, it's, I'm going to go back and, and watch that. Depending on how long it is, we might do a reaction, um, like depending on like what all they cover in it, it might be a good one to do a reaction to, but I'm going to check it out for sure. Really encourage you to go back and listen to that episode, the interview with Elisa Childers. But the point is, will. is that we're seeing and we're consuming stuff all yeah. the time, whether it's where we should live or what we believe, you know, mm-hmm. about life, about mm-hmm. purpose, about meaning, about identity. I think we as women have been so much more influenced by social media sure. than we even realize. Um, and I think that most of us probably consume hours more of social media than we do of, uh, you know, any like Christian resources, not even just the Bible, you know, but like, right. You know, podcasts that are encouraging us to think biblically. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a a woman consuming more things than men thing. I think it's the type of content women consume generally, like stereotypically being different than the kind of content men consume because men are on social media a lot as well, but they're not necessarily being influenced to buy stuff. They're just watching like dumb videos. (laughs) Like they're just watching for the sake of watching. They're not looking and being like, oh, we should buy this or we should get this or we should move into this kind of house in general, stereotypically speaking, you know? 
mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. from a biblical worldview. It's like the amount of social media that most of us, maybe not you, but that's most just right of now. Us, but I have been in seasons yeah. where I've consumed a lot more. It, but don't you yeah. think like for the it's, average it Christian woman out there, you. yeah, it's like it is influencing us so so incredibly much. And it's just like a subtle drip. It's like an idea of like just constantly dripping in these ideas, this thinking. And even if you're following, like there's a place for it, obviously. We're not sitting here saying like digital social media. That's not the message of this conversation. Obviously we have a ministry and Girl Defined is on social media. But like you're saying, there's just, that's not all we're consuming, right? Most of us aren't exclusively following, encouraging Christian pages where we're being yeah. like, you know, and like boosted in our theology and our understanding of God. It's like a, it's a smorgasbord. And I think there's a totally. place for that too. It's not like everything we follow has to be somehow like, you know, exclusively Christian. We can follow different people for different things. And if we're into like natural products, like our interests, our hobbies, yeah. but how much of what we're consuming, you know, they call them influencers for a yeah. reason. They are influencing like how much yeah. of the the choices we make, the thinking that we have, like you're saying, the convictions, what we believe, what's shaping even our perspective on totally. womanhood, for sure. which is a huge one. Like how we even view our design, our purpose, what success is, like what it means to be a woman of God. Like yeah. is that being shaped more by God's word and his truth and his design or is it being more shaped yeah. by the influencers that we're For following, sure. whether they claim to be Christians or they're totally not? Like, yeah. I mean, I can think of times where, and even to this day, like it still will get me sometimes. It's just there's so much on social media when it comes to like even just beauty, yeah. you know, and like fitness, where yeah. it's like you have a constant, endless buffet of opportunity to realize how unfit you are when you're seeing all these perfectly toned butts all the time. Like we've joked about this. It's like, it's true. The butts, they're just always right there and they're always perfect. And it's like, my butt will never look like that. This side of of heaven. A lot of butts on social media. My redeemed version might look like that, but this side of heaven, it ain't ever going to look like that. And you start, you just see it and you're not even like necessarily always seeking it out. Somehow it's just like, why am I seeing this perfectly toned butt like in my face? But then you start going down this rabbit trail, at least I have in my heart, or you see these women and you know you're like the same age as them, but they look so much younger or like everything about their skin is perfect and they have no lines. And like, you're just like, oh man, like am I like aging extra fast or what's you happening? You with Botox could look that way as well. Right. I know there's a lot of products and procedures going on, but it's, it's just that subtle drip yeah. of like, even in my... Yeah, but that's why it's important to like consume media critically. When you're seeing somebody who looks perfect on social media, chances are they don't look like that. They don't look like that in person, in real life. Either they have makeup done a certain way, maybe they have fillers, maybe they have Botox, maybe they've got a filter on their camera, like what they're filming. I mean, I don't know what it is about this camera, but like, I feel like in this camera, my skin looks pretty good. Yeah. I have, um, like BB cream on. Um, so like it's, it obviously kind of like evens things out, but even when I look at this compared to when I take a picture with my phone or when I go to post on Instagram stories, it's just like, oh wow, my skin looks radically different in this camera, which doesn't have a filter on it. That's just, I don't know. Maybe it did me a favor. (laughs) Maybe there's some setting on there. That's like B we've got you. But like this camera compared to taking a selfie on my phone, my face looks radically different. And so it's just important to remember that like what you're seeing on social media isn't always reality. Or when you look at somebody who has like the perfect marriage, they're showing you what they're showing you on purpose and for a purpose. They're not going to show you the ugly parts of their marriage, the fights, the contempt, whatever it may be, whatever is going on behind the scenes. Maybe they do have a good relationship, but even then, like, they're not going to show you the most negative parts of that good relationship. They're just going to keep the the positive parts in the spotlight because that's what's going to get positive attention. And oh, you know what? (laughs) I got to backtrack that. (laughs) In general, a lot of people are going to only show the positive parts of their relationship, but Matt and Abby seem to be the exception to that rule because, wow, um, yeah, they, they are very comfortable showing parts of their relationship that do not paint 
things in the most positive light. And I think, I don't know, for me, I think it's weird to to be like an influencer with your spouse or to be like a mommy vlogger. I just think that puts so much pressure on your relationship, your marriage, your family, like monetizing your relationship and making that the way that you get the money to like live your life just seems like a lot of pressure and not something that would be super enjoyable. So tangent aside, let's let's go back to this. In my own heart, I have found myself feeling like, oh, like my butt is so ugly or like, man. It's sounding like, like the butt is a big deal. Okay, I have struggled with, with the butt and like just being content. It's so funny the, the butt, butt that I've been The getting. butt probably isn't my... But we all, it's different for all of us, right? It's like I know, some people might, it's like the arms, like, like, oh man, you see like the woman and she's got these amazing arms. And for some women, it might, that might be more what they're thinking about. Or <laughs> so now we all know Kristen wants, I don't think about the arms really. It's more she the wants butt. the big booty. <laughs> we I all know, know Kristen from Girl to Fun wants, <laughs> she wants the muscle booty. Toned booty. She wants the toned booty. I I mean, just, I guess I could work out more, but, but I don't know. Things you never knew you wanted the to The point hear. is, is that I see that influence yeah, 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 of like, yeah, totally. now I'm questioning, like, I, yeah. I need to work out. I need to do more. I need to, like, even with my, my face or like the lines, it's like starting to feel like, okay, I, I need to be more beautiful or more like flawless you or more the, you dang, know, like the why am I still getting some pimples here and there? Like I'm so old, like this shouldn't be happening. Yeah. And so we start, I feel like what it does, all that to say is it gets my focus so on the here and yeah. now of the temporal of this life, not on an eternal focus, not on Christ, yeah. not on my purpose as a Christian woman, not on the children God has placed right in front of me or the family, the home that I'm trying to, you know, manage faithfully for the good of my family and the flourishing. It's like, it gets my focus on these like very tiny things. And then it becomes like this bullseye of like, yeah. I must change that. I like, I can't be happy until this yeah. or um, just discontentment with my butter, with my face. And, you know, until something changes and it's also temporal, yeah. like it just immediately wipes out any sort of yeah. eternal perspective of what truly matters for sure. And that's just an example of just subtle ways, even not engaging a ton yeah. that I have seen it influencing me yeah. and like distracting me, I think from what really matters. Yeah. And I think it's important to recognize that like what we consume does <clears throat> shape us and does like a like hundred shape our convictions, our beliefs, our purpose. And so if you take a step back and really ask yourself, like, what has shaped me? Like, why do I have the beliefs that I have? Why do I have the view of God that I have? Mm. Why do I feel certain ways about certain things? Um, I know for me, one of the most helpful things over the past year, for me personally, was connecting with, for me, it was a biblical counselor through mm. biblicalcounseling.com. And we're actually meeting mm. tomorrow, which I'm super excited about. But she is just a super godly woman who it started out as kind of like an official, like however many weeks, 12 weeks of like counseling together. Um, and then now it's it's more like on tap. She's kind of become more of a mentor of sorts, but having that godly input in my life to really challenge mm. a lot of my thoughts, why I think certain things, why I believe certain things, why I'm acting in certain ways, why I say certain yeah. things, you know, it's like, she's been able to really help me and take me to the word. I mean, she's, I'm always like blown away by like her knowledge and understanding of the word and just like, you know, and I'm like, okay, she's so many years older than me. I got time, you know, <laughs> but it's just, it's so helpful and encouraging. And I think sadly, a lot of us as women, hmm. either we don't know how to find someone like that, or we don't, like, we just don't take the time to invest into that. And that's actually one of the reasons Kristen and I launched the Girl Defined membership is because we are so passionate about yes. mentorship, about discipleship, about community, whether that looks like one-on-one -on -one counseling or being in a community with other godly women who desperately want to know God, mm -hmm. who want to live for him, who want their lives to be conformed to him. And the girl... Wait, is this is the whole point of this video an ad for their memberships? Because if so, I'm going to be ticked off. Well, the fine membership community is all about that. It's a private space where we are being challenged. Kristen and I are teaching workshops on different topics each month. We taught a workshop on biblical help for sexual struggles and mm -hmm. lust. Um, we just have different workshops that are dropping every month. We have lives that will drop every month. We have, um, you know, a prayer group. We have, we just have just all like an, sorts a of community stuff. page where we're all hanging yeah. out day in and day out, just sharing, chatting, discussing, um, praying for each yeah. other, weekly devotionals that we engage in together. It's just an entire ongoing community yeah. aspect aside from even the workshops and the lives sure. and the teaching and the resources. Like 
it's just, it's like all in one. Yeah. And just knowing how much my life changed and how much I was encouraged by having this like intentional discipleship in my life from this godly woman. It's like, we want to create, it's not that one-on-one, but it's the closest community discipleship that we have ever created Mm -hmm. and ever offered. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, man, I, yeah, I realize I've been influenced a lot by social media. I'm just feeling down or feeling like, oh, my life is the worst. I compare it to everyone around me. You know, any of that. Or if you're like, I'm not sure like where I'm going, what I'm doing. I'm feeling down. I'm in a season of singleness or I'm married or I want to have yeah. kids or I have kids. And you're just struggling or you just like feel like you need that community. You need those real friendships. This community, the Girl Defined community is for you. So you can go to girldefined.com slash membership and get plugged in because I think that having that intentional discipleship, having like walking real life with people, even if it's online, like in this space can be life changing. And so if you love listening to the podcast or you love keeping up with Girl Defined, this is like the most real raw space we've Mm -hmm. ever created. And I would just encourage you to come and be a part of it in a world where we are consuming so much, we are being influenced so much, having a space that you know is going to be rooted in the word, that is going to be pointing you to Christ, that is going to be other women there to pray with you, to link arms with you. I mean, it is such a unique opportunity. So I just really want to encourage mm-hmm. you to join us um, because I think that's going to help you in this like yeah. digital age that we live in. Yeah. And how do they join? Girldefined.com slash membership. <laughs> Girldefined.com. I know. It's like everything, but how do I find it? No, but I already said it. Wait, you did? Yeah. Halfway through. You got to see it at the end too. Okay. Girldefined. I don't know if she said it or not. Um, but in general, I think that like they are making a valid point of being aware of the kind of content you're, that you're consuming, how it makes you feel, if it is making you anxious or unsettled or like envious, like your life's not good enough, like any of those negative emotions. It's like, okay, how do we how do we get this in check? And it is good to have community, whether you're religious or not. I think that having a community of some kind is super important because humans are social creatures, even as introverts, just because you don't find it exhilarating to be around people all the time. I think a lot of us, I say us because I'm, I consider myself an introvert, but like a lot of us know that it's important to spend time with people like that is emotionally fulfilling. And, um, it, it's like, it can be a study group from school. It can be going to a happy hour with your coworkers. It can be a small group at church, a mom group of moms whose kids are similar ages to yours. Whatever it may be, just having that social connection and being able to click in there with people who you relate to on a certain level is really nice. And it does like it makes you feel good being able to spend time with those people and be in community with them. And so I do think that Bethany and Kristen are making a valid point here. Dot com slash membership. We would love to see you in there. It's been a really fun. Okay. I have a huge question for you. I think a lot of people might be wondering this because what? looking on, the hot seat. you are like social media woman extraordinaire. Really? You have many mm. accounts or you have had them yes. like trying to things. Trying to down. Trying to, you yeah. know, it's like your single girl or your intimate wife or your, she works smart. Like I'm doing too much. I now. can't, I'm like logged out of one account and I'm like, don't have the motivation to even log back in. But you're the opposite. Yeah. You find, I guess, energy from like social media and what you do online and engaging. Yeah. And so how like it's different for you than it is for me. Yes. Like how we even interact. Obviously we both can be influenced totally. by things. But how do you find that balance yeah. of like obviously you're pro social media, totally. being on it, but not but like being watchful of yeah. what you also consume being on it so much. Yeah. Well, I spend a lot more time creating and producing and outpouring than I do okay. consuming. I absolutely like love um I just love helping people wherever they are. So Girl Defined, it's like more like, you know, spiritual encouragement for biblical womanhood, you know, mm-hmm. and I have other accounts that I run and I just love the idea. Like if I get a passion about something, I'm probably going to create an Instagram account to start (laughs) encouraging people because there are the pros and cons to everything. So I like to think of using it for good, you know, like of how can I, how can I help people? How can I encourage people? Mm. How can I reach out to people? It's something that's energizing to me. I enjoy it, but I am a lot more careful about what I consume. So there are many times where I've gone through like who I follow and I've Mm. just unfollowed tons of people. And I try to do that regularly because I can, you know, it's like, wait, why am I following? Even just when it comes down to like, consumerism and like stuff. It's like, I don't need this. I don't want to see this, you know? So I will regularly like unfollow people. Um, but I think for me, if I don't have a strong purpose for why I'm on Instagram, Hmm. I don't really want to be there. So for me, that means creating value for other people, um, in my different accounts. And that's what gives me the motivation to stay on less of just like, 
it's fun on here. Like yeah, it's not yeah. really, in my opinion, a fun space unless you have like a purpose for being there. Like you're intentional with mm-hmm. what you're consuming. Um, you have a reason for being there. You know why you're there or else it's like hours of endless scrolling and you feel like a trash can at the end. Like, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't, you know, it's like no good, you know? So something else that is helpful mm. for me is, you know, having other things that I need to get done. So I've mentioned, <laughs> I feel like in every episode now I'm going to mention my list. I don't know. Maybe that's a Bethany thing. I think that sometimes there is value in scrolling for no reason. Scrolling just because you need 15, 20 minutes to like zone out and just consume social media. I just think zoning out and relaxing is a valid reason for doing something as much as wanting to learn or grow or hone in a skill is a valid reason for doing something ladies book study from my church, but I have (laughs) books that I need to read through. And so I don't have time always to just like scroll on social media in the evening and knowing like I've got to get a certain amount of reading done from these great books is very helpful. So I think when we, I don't know, have strong purpose, we know where we're Mm -hmm. going, we know why we're doing things that helps us to make, I guess, wiser decisions. So for me that that's what is so helpful Mm -hmm. is constantly reevaluating, like, why am I doing this? What is my purpose? And if it's not, I don't feel like serving the community or a good thing for this season of life, like I'll just stop. And yeah, I'm, I'm not like really that worried about it. <laughs> so like you don't have this magnetic draw to I don't know about that. home feed or like scrolling. It doesn't sound like, like, and, and oh, not man. as much. Like if I'm not creating an outpouring, okay. then I feel like a trash can. Like, what am I doing here? You okay. Know? So that is, that's interesting that you get energy from pr- like creating the content. Yeah. You're not on there to consume, but I know that's not true for a lot of people. That's probably not most people. I know. I think most people I talk to. It's true. Is the struggle. And for me too, would be going on there, not to create. They're like, we don't struggle with this, but we know that y'all probably do because we're different. Like Kristen's like, I don't like to get on social media. I don't consume it that much. And then Bethany says, well, I I am on social media a lot, but it's because I'm creating and I'm providing value. That's for us though. For you guys, you know, like we're the exception to the rule. Y'all are, y'all are just on here scrolling endlessly feeling like trash cans. Yes. Yes hate content, but just to passively consume content. It is such an easy grab. You've got 10 minutes. You're just sitting there. I'm just going to scroll Instagram. I'm just going to, whatever your preferred social media platform I feel. Is it still Instagram? Is like the main. I think for the millennial women. I feel like it's what we're on. You just get a quick scroll, 10 minutes. We've all heard it turns to 20, turns to 30, turns to an hour, but it it does become the default, right? Like, oh, you're at the doctor's office waiting for something. Oh, let me just scroll Instagram until my appointment. Oh, you're at the bank waiting in line. Let me just scroll. You know, it's almost like the default where we don't even realize it's what we're defaulting to all the time. So like, let's talk to that person because I feel like that is the friends I've talked to, sisters, like we've talked about this, like it is hard to get out of the scrolling trap. (laughs) You're like, that's nice, Bethany. You're not relatable to anyone. (laughs) Let's talk about something more. But I think think people will find that interesting because you are like so much on there on so many accounts that people wonder like, how do you find that balance? But what you're drawn to is just different. Yeah. Um, I I mean, there are so many ways to have uh, accountability or like purpose with social media so that you don't end up scrolling endlessly for hours. Like I think there are great ways to set boundaries for yourself to set yourself up for success. So if you're like, I don't want to be the woman who spends an hour scrolling at night, I'd rather like, you know, read a book or I'd rather spend intentional time with my family or my husband or whatever. I'd rather, you know, I don't know, work Mm -hmm. out. Like there are so many things that are so much more life giving or beneficial. And you're like, but I just find myself falling back into this Mm -hmm, easy, almost mm -hmm. like addictive state. I think that there are things that you can do that would really help. I mean, one is like most phones have a time, like you can set up like I own, I want my, I don't want to be able to access these apps after, after a certain amount of time and you yeah. set a lock on it. Or mm-hmm. you can do something where you, um, you know, you leave your phone in the kitchen or plug it in somewhere else. So it's not actually in your bedroom with you. Hmm. So I think coming up with something where it's like a boundary for yeah. yourself. And if you're married, maybe ask your husband to keep you accountable. If you're not, maybe a really good friend and be like, Hey, and it's not hmm. because it's necessarily a bad thing. But you're, right. you're putting up a boundary to help you do what you actually want to do. Um, and I know for a lot of us, we're like, I wish I would read more or I wish I would work out more. I wish I would just, you know, have more time of like quiet or being in the word. Like mm. it's so hard for me to actually read the Bible, but then it seems so easy to spend time on social media. So I think like for me personally, having boundaries in that area, which I've, and some of them have been for seasons. Like there was a season where 
you know, for the weekend, I deleted Instagram off my phone and I would delete Instagram off my phone for the weekend so that it wasn't even a temptation. Mm. There are seasons where I've left my phone in um, the kitchen and just like, it's like after a certain time in the evening, it's just there and I don't touch it anymore. Um, And having certain boundaries for different seasons of life has been super helpful for me. Yeah. What for you is helpful? Yeah. Whether it's not social media, but like to, to not maybe do things that are, you're like, I I want to do something Mm -hmm, else with my time, mm -hmm. you know? I think having what you said, the boundaries, knowing what you're going toward, like if you have certain, like a a book, like audiobooks have been a big one for me. Um, I'm not like in one right now, but I want to start another one. But over the years, like I have listened to so many audiobooks and instead of like, oh, I've got the 10 minutes here at the doctor's office or like what I was saying, you have a really great book that you're listening to. And so when you have that 10, 15 minutes... You're like, I could literally be reading without reading. I can just pop in an earbud. I can sit here. I can just listen. And now I'm going to get 15 minutes of really great content. Like, you know, something that could be really spiritually encouraging, inspiring, something that is like drawing your heart in a good direction, like toward the Lord and maybe deepening your theology. Maybe there are things. I mean, there has to be things for all of us, right? Where we're like, man, I wish I understood more about this aspect of God or his character or like the Holy Spirit or some sort of theological topic. You know, I've made my jokes throughout this video, but I feel like this section is pretty solid. And again, like the overall concept of just making sure that social media isn't having a negative impact on your life. And if it is, how do we reevaluate how we interact with social media? And, you know, Bethany giving the, the example of putting boundaries on it. On some weekends, she would delete Instagram on off of her phone so that way she wasn't tempted to go on there and she could just spend time with her family, then reinstall it on Monday. Kristen saying, you know, instead of scrolling, why don't you find an audiobook? These are practical tips that are helpful and I'm just taking it in. I got I got nothing. Topic or, you know, I just want to in like general want to grow in my faith as a Christian woman. Think about how many incredible resources. Yeah we could consume if we just took even a portion. I'm not saying ditch social media altogether. That's not the message here. Like get rid of it. I don't think that's always the answer. I think breaks, I've done it too. Like I've gone on fast and I've just like not done anything. I think those can be very beneficial, especially if you're like, you feel like you're really stuck in a bad pattern where you're like, it's just like all the time. Sometimes just cutting it off and like getting a fresh start and perspective. You don't even realize how much you're like influenced and engaged till you step out of it. I think that can be really healthy. But imagine, like, just to inspire, like, imagine there's a book. You're like, I've been wanting to read that. I can't find the time. I'm not making the time. It's probably more more the reality, yes, right? For sure. I'm not making the time. But I could listen to it on audio. I can invest. I could buy that audiobook. I could get it free. I know we've enjoyed Libby over yes. the years. It's a, like a free oh my God, digital too. library yes. uh-huh. app where you can actually get a lot of audiobooks for free on there. I'm with you, girls. Yep, I love Libby. So not even having to buy them. And then I'll just have that book, like the, the Libby app or, you know, whatever, Audible, like on my phone. And then I'll just like, every time I have that spare mm-hmm. few minutes, like pop that one, like Airbud and just listen for 10, 15 minutes. Oh, 100%. And it's amazing how you can actually read a lot. Yes. Because it's, you don't realize how yeah. much, how many pockets of little, like time yeah. here and there. Maybe you're in a season with littles and you find yourself up. I know you said you were up for a while last night in the middle of the night with kids. You know, and let's say you're in that stage of nursing or wherever where you're like, man, I just got some downtime and I want to fill it with things that are going to be more edifying. Like an audiobook is just one example of what you could do. It's like podcasts. There are great ones listening to this. Oh, way to go. It's true. Even better though, imagine if you were a part of the Girl Defined community or the membership yeah. <sighs> and you had a few minutes of downtime and instead yeah. Of just mindlessly scrolling social media, you hopped Not on and you were engaging in the community and yeah. you were interacting with sisters in Christ from around the world and being encouraged, like watching the workshops. Even better. Yeah. yeah, watching the workshops. Like I think as Christian women, we are lazy in a lot of ways oh, in so too. our pursuits of what we say we want. Yeah. And then the reality of what the, the choices that we make. Yeah. And I'm not trying to like put everyone down and like do a big wet blanket on everything. I'm in this just as much of like, I think we are just lazy sometimes and we don't take inventory of our time. And we don't actually thoughtfully say like, I, like I could like consume such better things. Just imagine what it would do for us as Christian women. If we were intentional, like, like actually intentional, not lazy, but like thinking about how can I use these little pockets of time to actually Mm -hmm put stuff into my heart and my mind, like input things that are beneficial spiritually, that are growing me, that are encouraging me, that are sharpening me, that are like strength. Is that not going to make somebody feel anxious? 
like if they're already feeling anxiety, because that's what the title of the video is, the anxiety inducing impact of social media. If somebody's already feeling anxiousness in terms of like their relation to how they consume social media and you're telling them like, well, you're just being lazy with how you do it. Is that not going to make them feel just a little bit more anxious than they already did? And sure, maybe we could be more intentional about how we use our time. That's totally possible that that's a valid thing to say about people in general is like, hey, you're not you're not being intentional and you're not utilizing every second of the day that you have. Yep, yeah, sure, we're, we're probably not. But there are only so many hours in the day. And if you are working full time, if you are taking care of children, if you're homeschooling, if you're going to school full time, if you're living with a chronic illness, if you have chronic pain, like, and you are just kind of going like trying to go day to day with with dealing with that. And then also trying to take care of your health, trying to eat, trying to socialize, trying to learn something, whether it's journaling or reading the Bible or reading a book, like whatever it may be, that you're going to take care of your house, you're going to have to get groceries. Like there's just a lot of stuff to do. There are a lot of things that we have to do. As human adults, there are just so many different things that we have to do. And if if being like rigidly scheduled for every second of the day works for you, that's great. But that's not going to be the case for some people. And so maybe sometimes it, it's just nice to to have a little bit of time to scroll. Maybe sometimes it's nice to be a little quote unquote lazy and maybe that's for a season. Maybe it's just like, you know what? Stuff is really stressful right now and so I can't add anything onto my plate. Like I just need to be able to zone out and relax and then maybe a little bit later you move into a different season. Maybe some stressors change, habits change, whatever it may be and you're like, okay, I am ready to be more intentional about this thing and and I'm ready to listen to more audiobooks or find a podcast that is going to teach me something and then you engage in that too. But I just, I I don't like that they're talking about feeling anxiety because of social media and then calling people lazy with the way that they consume it. I just, I I know it's like a small petty thing, but just that, that word specifically, um, it just like graded on me fitting my faith and drawing me closer to the Lord and motivating me in the right ways and like helping me steer clear of like consumerism and all these things, but like really focusing my heart on the Lord. Like just imagine the difference that would make. Mm -hmm. Our hope isn't to like be the wet blanket or to be a big downer on social media. Obviously I love it. I spend a lot of time like creating and outpouring, but it's just that being that friend saying, Hey, Mm -hmm. what are you consuming? What's driving your motivations? Like, why do you want that certain thing? Or why do you believe this? And really asking yourself if social media has influenced you in ways that are like anti-gospel and Hmm. anti like what God has for us, or maybe they have really influenced you in a way where you're like, wow, my faith has been so strengthened, but just kind of taking inventory and asking yourself, where does God want me to go as a Christian woman? What does he want me focusing on in this season of life? How can I better love the people that he's put right Mm -hmm. around me? My family, my kids, my community, my church, like my neighbors, like how can I use my time to like point others to Christ for his glory? And it's just hard. It's so hard when there is this like right at our fingertips all this time, this thing that's constantly like, oh, the struggle oh, is you know? real. So our encouragement is just to take a step back and ask yourself, where are you going toward? What what would God have for you? Like to glorify him best in this season and to learn more about mm-hmm. him, to continue to grow as a Christian woman and to make sure that we are really like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not like our lives going to all look so different, but at the end of the day, we are all called to live for his glory and to, and to tell others about him and to know him more. Mm. And I think sometimes social media can kind of get in the way of that. And so it can distract. So come join us over at the membership girldefined.com slash membership. So you can be encouraged in your walk with Christ and really be strengthened. And hopefully we'll see you in there. If not, we'll see you again next week on the girl Defined show. All right. All right, so those are Bethany and Kristen's thoughts on social media and how we should approach our interactions with it and the kind of content we consume. And there there were parts where I was like, you're on to something, I'm with you. I'm on the same page, you two. Uh, but then other parts, 
not my favorite. Ticked me off a little bit, but uh, as always, it's kind of a mixed bag with Girl Defined. So you'll have to let me know what you thought of this episode. If you have any um, opinions or anything that you want to add, definitely let me know. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can put those thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you are listening to the podcast on Spotify, you can leave it in the Q&A for this episode. While you are doing that, if you would consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel or leaving the podcast a rating or a review, that would be incredible. And if you have done any of those things already, thank you so much. I am so appreciative of you and I love being able to just sit here, hang out with you and talk about whatever. Thank you so much for watching or listening. Please be kind to people and I will see you in the next one. Bye.